How y'all doing? Bree here with Ginger in the Desert Creations. Today I am going to do another landscape. See if I can use a couple of different methods and get something that looks even better than the last one. So let's go paint! Alright, we are going to be doing Rocky Mountain Meadow Revisited. This will be more of a summer version instead of a springy version. How you know? Because there will be less snow in the mountains. I am going to do this with a ton of colors and my favorite catheter tip injectors because I love the way the patterns come out. Cannot resist. So for the sky we have a blue white mixture that I made a long time ago. Some Mont Mart white some Montmartre Silva that should make a nice little sky. Oh, and, 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 and don't forget the cobalt blue that will be used elsewhere as well, which is why I almost forgot about it. That is our sky. Onto our mountains. We have a violet that I mixed up myself. Raw umber, the brown, gray, and olive green. All Montmartre paints. The further away portion of the meadow will be chroma mold metals, emerald, a touch, and yes I hopefully do mean just a touch, of lemon yellow from Montmartre, Montmartre's monastro green, and Montmartre's medium green. And for the big meadowy part with all the flowers, we are keeping the monastro and the medium green, and we are going with a uh, Creative Inspirations, Scarlet Lake mixed with Montmartre Brilliant Red, ready color, orange yellow from Montmartre, once again our friend the Cobalt Blue, and Magenta, all from Montmartre. And with all of this we are playing by my rules of no more than six, preferably five colors in any one section. Guess we'll start with the sky, shall we? Sky. Sure. Hello, this lovely silva and the white. White puffy clouds. Two colors of blue and silver, because who doesn't like a bit of silver in their sky? Mostly this blue. So we take a big drag of that blue. I'm actually going to tip it up and see if I can get some of the air back out of there, because I don't want a lot of air. No! Air bad! Paint good, air bad. Cobalt! Nice big drag of the cobalt. I try to give some to my feet as well. Just checking you're still recording so that I'm not talking to myself because I do that enough in life, thank you very much. So a nice bit of the silva. Some white. Loads of white because we want it to be kind of a nice little cloudy day. Silvery cloudy day. I'm going to pull some more silver on the sides of that white just so hopefully it will stick around with the white. Pop a little more of the cobalt. I'm almost out of suction space here. And now we're gonna put it on the sky. <laughs> or just over the edge, who knows? Okay. Let's try to get a bit more of the cobalt in here, huh? my suction. A 
is one problem with the injectors is you draw more air than you would like. But you can fix that to some extent. Oops. <laughs> and if you squeeze too much, you end up putting it in the wrong place. Okay. Let's hope it looks less like toothpaste when I stretched it a little. Because <laughs> there's a bit of toothpaste going on there. Pinch the corner here to get it covered because I don't want to lose too much of this paint even though there is quite a bit here. I want to encourage it to kind of spread and and look skyish. I don't know. Get off that big old blob of gray that was going on there. Hmm. I think maybe I want to keep more of this cobalt that's up here. So I'm going to kind of drag it. Let some of the lighter stuff fall off. And if you clear off a lot of the paint then this layer should not move too much while you tilt your other layers. Because there's just not much paint to move. I'm just not loving the way the color looks on that corner, so I am just trying to encourage it to leave. Open the door and wait for it to fly out. Just like a bird. I am gonna talk nonsense all I want. So just get used to it. touch of the crazy sky but that's pretty good though I think I'm just gonna put a little bit more paint on that little edge right there where I was messing with it I've gotten an uneven horizon line Okay, now we want to put some mountains in because we need them Rocky Mountains for it to be a Rocky Mountain meadow. There we go. Take a nice little drag of the violet. Actually, I'm going to start over again because I sucked up some air very first of all and that was not my aim. Gray. Green and umber. Umber, umber, umber. Definitely want some of the browniness. Some of the greeniness. And some of that grayness. Mountainishness.
I like what over here is doing, even though this looks a little Whoville because I've messed up my lines a little. But I'm going to try to get more of the browns and greens in here and try to get the lines to be more up and down instead of whooshy like that. Because I don't think that my mountain should look whooshy like that. Just to go and be picky. I'm going to pull this paint in a few different directions just so that I can get it spread out a bit. Kind of go up and down, only go up and down with the mountains, so that's a good thing to learn. So if you're going to do it in stages like this, try not to use a ton of paint for the middle part. <laughs> okay, now I am going to... shapes a little bit here. There's a ton of paint on there, which just will not do. Okay, so I'm going to pull this down here. Let some of this paint run down. 
Let it create a bit of the cells in there. And then I'm just going to whoosh it off of there. At about the level I want it to be. And this is about where we're going to put in the meadow. I'm just going to encourage the too much part of the paint right off the bottom. I've got a little bit of almost bare canvas showing here, so I need to do a little bit to cover that. two spots on here that I'm trying to cover. There goes one of them right there. And if we can catch up with the other one, that would be very nice. I'm trying not to mess up my lines too much. Kind of want our mountains to go with gravity. <laughs> and that is more difficult than it seems when you're trying to, to pour. <laughs> and I am going to very soon run out of spoons to be playing with. I should probably grab a palette knife. Oh, that's a lot of green. Just encourage it to mellow out a little, why don't we? I just got rid of that bit of gray that I liked. Hmm. I think I prefer swiping with a bit of the gray. Keeping that pretty much as my mountain line because my mountains are bigger than I want them. Oh boy, I have a problem developing up there. Hang on, save the paint. 
Don't tip things over. Okay, so that is roundabout cut off for the bottom of the mountains right there. Just drag it down so that we don't have a big puddle. Some unfortunate bits of blue. Give it a little jiggle <laughs> and spread. Okay. A little bit of the dark. There's a little bit of yellow in there. That's not bad. Yeah, isn't that bad? And it's still got like little bits of the mountain in there, so it still kind of blends nicely. Not as worried about my lines on the meadow part as I am on the mountain part, because the mountains look a little weird if they're all wonky to where meadow grass can go in any way it wants. Uh, save the red, save the red, save the red. Most of the red anyway. It's a little bit. Okay, that's okay. Let's do something with that in a second. Okay. Ooh, getting the colors going on here. The yellow orange is hardly showing up in there at all. Showing up a little bit in the cells, but not a lot, so I will pull in some of that. And our green is looking pretty dark, so I'll try to pull in a good portion of this monastro green so it won't be so dark, quite so dark anyway. I think the blue and the red are showing up as well as I would like, so I'm not going to plus with those as much. It's doing all kinds of different stuff, isn't it? Since I'm trying to get since I'm trying to get colors to come up in my meadowy part, I am going to torch this before I stretch it out more. So that hopefully our colors will present themselves in the way that they see fit. Cool. Spread it down. 
downward and this way words I guess that's that way words isn't it because it's away from me this way words is this way words pulling towards the corner here and we're over when it looks most like a wilderness garden. I don't want to pull too far into the mountains. Here are our corners with what I got on my hands. Why not? Now, legitimately, it shouldn't be lighter further away and darker closer up, but that is what happened, and that is the way it shall stay. Maybe I'll try to push a little more of this off and just keep more of this light color. I kind of like the light color better. There was a little bit of mountainy looking bit just sticking up there, and we cannot have that. <laughs> so I ran my finger through it. Oof, stop scorching the paint. No smoking. This is a no smoking house. I do think that I'm really going to end up loving the sky. I just don't know about the mountains. And there ain't a lot that I can do about it at this point. I think I prefer the snowy look on the mountains. I think that's my problem because they're just like too much rocky sandy. But this is summer and it's supposed to be rocky sandy looking because the snow melts. At least it does around here. This is where we are going to leave it alone. Leave it alone because it's not so bad. Here we are. Look, the glare off the light looks like there's a sun in the sky. Isn't that nice? Let's quietly go this way and we can look through the meadow. The funny looking eye cells. The meadow that stares at you. And the mountains. That spike's a little weird, but I'm going to leave it. It will defy gravity. There must be a little bit of Whoville in my meadow. And here, 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 here is the lovely sky. A little bit of the silvery. That should go a little bit shiny by the time it's done. And you can hardly tell that I have been arguing with this corner. And stuck my finger in it several times. <laughs> but there it is. There it is, there it is. The summer Rocky Mountain Meadow. Sighting for the direct result. There it is, another dry result from the mountain meadows. So the sky looks fantastic. I just love the way an injector makes the sky look. I don't know about all the silver hanging out right down there, but it's okay. 
But that, that is just awesome. And I'm getting feedback from my lights again. Arrgh! Tell me, tell me, tell me, how do I film this without getting problems from my light? I need a natural light source, which I should probably start doing now that I am filming during the day. Hello, day. Yeah, I'm weird. The only unfortunate part I'm showing you right now is that there's more than a little bit of Hoville in a couple of my mountains. I think I noticed it when it was still wet and I didn't do anything about it and I didn't think to do anything about it. So, it's there. And maybe I should get brave and paint a little flag in there or something. Like, oh yes, we claim this in the name of, what is it, Mars? I don't know. <laughs> it's been a while. Anyway, so we see sky, 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 beautiful sky. And then slightly impossible mountains. And it's interesting, the color variety in there. I still think that I like the mountains better with a bit of snow, so I like it earlier in the season. And then we come down into our meadowy bit. And there's some interesting color variety in there. Overall, I do like it, even though there is an impossible mountain. So there it is. The big old mountain meadow, summer mountain meadow. Thanks for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. Bye bye.